My name is Nathaniel Dodson, and in today's Photoshop tutorial, we're going to take a look at creating this little elk on fire, burning elk branches, photo manipulation. I think you're really going to like it. Let's jump into Photoshop and just get it started right away. All right, so here things begin in Photoshop. I've got this elk or this highland deer or whatever it is. It looks elkish enough for me. And we're going to go ahead and give him a, a little flaming headdress here. Now, the first thing I like to do when I'm working with these kind of photo manipulations is create a selection around the object. And in this case, of course, it's the elk. So I'm gonna grab my quick selection tool and hit the select subject button to just let Photoshop do its thing. And then I'm going to use my lasso tool and add to the selection and just loop in any areas that haven't been selected well. And I will also use my lasso in the subtract uh, selection mode to go ahead and just knock out areas that kind of got over selected. I'm just looking to create a, a pretty decent selection, but something that's definitely still pretty rough. And once I've got this selection, I'm going to go select and choose select and mask. And then here in select and mask, I want to use my little refine edge brush tool and just paint over a bunch of the edges. He's got this, you know, rough, very organic fur all around the edges. So uh, it's going to be very, uh, very useful to use this brush in particular here for this uh, uh, for this object so or this this thing I should say this elk so I'm going to just paint over these edges really quickly and clean everything up to the best of my ability here and once I kind of have everything cleaned up all through here I'm going to choose to output this as a new layer with layer mask why I really just want to save the selection and I know you can just output a selection and save it as a selection which probably would have been the better way to go but I was all caught up in the moment here already and I just outputted it as a layer with a new layer with layer mask so I'm just gonna unlock the background layer here and drag the the masked version of the elk below it and just shut it off and stash it down there once I've done that I am going to uh, add one color lookup table on top of our image and use the drop blues LUT and then a second color lookup table and use the moonlight LUT I'll then select all three of those layers and just convert those three layers to a smart object and then go filter camera raw filter to apply the camera raw filter in camera raw I'm going to mess around with the temperature and tint kind of make things a little more bluish purplish I'm going to uh, reduce highlights and whites all the way down negative 100 I'm going to reduce shadows and blacks a little bit as well and then I'm going to punch the exposure down a bit to darken the image and make it more like a night scene I will also do a little reverse dehazing to kind of add haziness like you would expect at night and I may even reduce a little bit of the vibrance or saturation as well uh, and then just return this to photo shop I'll add a few adjustment layers here like hue saturation and just shift the hue and saturation of the color blue throughout this image to kind of tone that back a little bit um, I'm going to use quick select to just paint a huge soft selection and add a levels adjustment layer set to multiply to give us a nice vignette to help really rein in where the eyes are going to look in this image I'm going to use a gradient map with kind of the, these rusty orange all the way up to like a very uh, tan color uh, just to start to change the color of our elk and here I, I did use that selection we saved. So just, you know, command or control click on that layer mask down there and then add your gradient map. You'll automatically have the mask uh, containing or constraining your gradient map within that one little area. And, uh, you know, I can me mess around with that a little bit until it looks right. And then comes the time to start adding fire. And all these images of fire are from unsplash.com. You can go there and look up burning flames, fire, campfire, whatever you want. And uh, you want to find a, a bunch of different flames. And I was just importing them, setting them to the blend mode of screen, and then using levels to just boost the blacks a little bit, really intensify the blacks to make sure everything but the fire was showing. And then an image where there was a little extra stuff, uh, I would either mask away stuff I didn't want or use the lasso tool and create a selection around the bits of fire I wanted hit command or control J to pop it up onto its own layer and delete the original part of the image uh, that I dragged into Photoshop uh, so just this is this part's a little bit of a labor of love but you really want to get it right because obviously it's the fire part and it's kind of important uh, and you can really make a lot of cool stuff so just transform and warp and distort and skew and resize and tilt and just adjust the flames until they're looking pretty good and fairly natural don't forget throw a mask on there if you need to just mask away little bits and and blend some stuff together there's absolutely nothing wrong with that so go through and i'm just gonna wrap up the fire uh, really quickly here and then once we've got all of our fire in place it's time that i start painting on the glow now when i'm working with a really dark image like this and a dark animal like this which isn't going to reflect in the same way that like the exhaust pipe on a motorcycle would if it's chrome 
Uh, what I want to do is begin using my base glow layer, which is going to be a blank layer set to vivid light. And then I'm going to take a brush and I'm really going to tone the brush down, you know, just reduce the opacity and the flow of the brush quite a bit, just a big soft edge brush. And I'm going to hold down alter option and sample colors from our flames and just begin painting in areas just very gently, very gradually. This does not have to be extreme at all. You're, there's going to be a series of layers we create here to build this effect up. And we're going to uh, just paint in kind of where we think light should be a uh, hitting if it was falling off the flames and the more you do it the better you're going to get at it um, and there's some people who are really amazing at this kind of digital painting uh, but just really play with it and massage it I'm just kind of blowing through it quickly because I'm being recorded and I don't want this tutorial to be two hours long but you can take two three hours and really work this out and make it perfect go find pictures of stuff being lit by an overhead flame stuff like that and really really dial in what you're doing so once we've got the vivid light stuff down I, I do paint a little bit of orange on the ground as well. I'm going to use a color dodge layer and just build the effect out even more. Paint again with a very subtle brush, you know, reduce the brush power quite a bit using the opacity and flow sliders. And then I create a third layer and this is where I create the really strong edge la edge lighting, backlighting, whatever you want to call it. And here I'm going to power up my brush a little bit and I am going to just use a very small brush and get in there and paint over the edges uh, and just really make them stick out. I'm going to do this on a level even to where I'm painting these individual hairs in his fur to really, really give that effect that there's there's this fiery glow reflecting off of the back and off of the nose and the face and all over this elk. So this part takes a little bit of time, but it's really, really important. It can really change the whole dynamic of the image uh, and really, really make it something special for you. So go through and just you know add these harsher, more strong highlights. And by the way, you don't want to use a mask uh, for something like this if you want to kind of soften these highlights. Usually I would say go non-destructive use a mask but in this case it's just better to uh, reduce the sort of the opacity and flow of the eraser tool and straight use the eraser on that uh, on this type of layer because a mask is going to prevent you from going in and painting more in a, in a certain spot later on so if you decide you need to go in and add more around his nose or on the hair and you've already masked that part away you can't add more you have to create a whole new layer and it's just a whole thing so this is a case where the eraser is still really useful and you can go in and just rub away or you know, decrease the strength of some of this back backlighting and edge lighting in different areas of the image but again take your time and have fun with this so next up I'm going to add sort of the color and contrast after finishing up with the edge lighting and this is just a blank layer set to the overlay blend mode and I'm again sampling colors out of the flames big soft edge brush and I'm just going to paint over this stuff and just add a real nice orange and yellow glow to the elk overall reduce the opacity a little bit where you see fit uh, if you want to and I'm also going to add a color dodge layer and do large largely the same thing and reduce the opacity and then for a few of these layers if it seems like there's too much like blurry color being added to the dark bits of fur I'm just going to go in and use my blend if sliders split that black slider and lift away some of this color that I've been adding lift it away from the shadows of the underlying layer so I'm going to split that black handle for underlying layer and just drag some of that color out of there it's a very subtle effect but it really helps with the realism of what you're working on and I'll also go in and just tweak the backside of the elk a little bit and the ground light and the glow that's hitting the ground and just mess around with stuff in general before adding a big orange glow above his head. So this begins with a big orange a blob and that's going to be set to screen and probably about 20% opacity and then a big white blob in the middle of that set to linear dodge add and I will check off transparency shapes layer in my layer style dialog box and reduce the fill opacity of that to about 20 as well and then I'm going to add another big orange glow on top of that also set the screen and probably reduce that to around 20% opacity too. So there's going to be this kind of big orange blob, white blob, orange blob thing. And the top orange blob is going to be big because we, we sort of want that light to be falling down the back uh, and across the back of our elk as well. That is going to be a matter of adding a color lookup table. So we're going to use like the teal green LUT, reduce the opacity to 20, somewhere between 25 and 50%. Add a color balance adjustment layer and just infuse some reds and yellows and blues into the image and probably reduce the opacity of that layer a little bit as well. Then I'll add another color lookup table. This one's going to be edgy amber. And I usually set this to soft light uh, and reduce the opacity way down. I mean like to 10 or 15%. And then I'm going to 
going to merge all my layers to a new layer, Command Shift Option or Control Shift Alt and the letter E, convert this layer to a smart object and jump back into Camera Raw, where I'm going to play around and just change the color temperature, the tint. I'm going to add a bunch of clarity, add a bunch of sharpness, uh, add a little bit of finishing grain to this effect and bring it back into Photoshop and then just reduce the uh, the opacity of that layer to blend it with what I had originally. And then I uh, simply add a color balance layer where I just add some of the colors I think it's missing. I think it's a little too yellow and kind of orangey. So I'm going to add some more magenta and blue, especially to the shadows. And then I also added a selective color adjustment layer and tried to remove yellow just from the blacks, which really what it does is adds a bunch of blue to the blacks. Uh, but it was really kind of making the image look chunky and like the whole bottom half of the elk just disappeared and started looking really bad. So at this point I go back and now is where you begin tweaking and adjusting. Should I use some curves and lift the contrast? Should I go back to camera raw originally or a couple camera rolls ago? Eventually what I what it ended up being was I needed to adjust the gradient map that we originally laid down. I just tweaked that gradient map layer a little bit uh, to lift away some of that dark purple that was really kind of clumping up on the bottom side of the elk. Of course, I adjusted a bunch of layers along the way, uh, but at the end, we got our nice finished result, the burning elk photo manipulation. And yeah, it's pretty much that simple. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. And if you did enjoy this video, check out this other video that has just appeared on screen. Use the link that's right there. Check out this photo manipulation of a glowing portal in the middle of the streets of Tokyo, Japan, or wherever this is, and a human being jumping through it. I think you'll really enjoy it if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching this one all the way to the end. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodson.com. I'll catch you in the next one.